To say back for blood is left for dead but not as good would be reductive, simplistic and absolutely true. Back for Blood is one of many horde shooters on the market, cooperative games where you go up against swarms of enemies bolstered by larger, more threatening ones. You got your Back for Blood, you got your World War Z, you've got your Aliens Fire Team Elite, you've got some shit with vampires, I don't know. Being developed by Turtle Rock, Back for Blood has a lot of Left for Dead in its DNA. The problem is it has nothing like the personality of that game. None of the same charm. There's a fairly sizable cast of characters to choose from, none of whom are as memorable or stand out as much as the protagonists from Left for Dead. None of the special infected oh sorry, special ridden you fight, stand out the way the hunter and the smoker and the boomer and the witch did from Left 4 Dead. Tall half-naked zombie with clubby arm, lumpy zombie what explodes, zombie that spits something and jumps about a bit, they have some similarities to the original Special Infected, but just come across as more generic, less able to stand out from the commoner garden horde, and they're just Fucking annoying to fight. Just really fucking annoying. Almost as if to sell how generic the enemies are, the special ridden are spawned in abundance over and over again. On higher difficulties, it's not uncommon to bump into four of the same special ridden over and over again, sometimes all at once. Just an army of the same looking, really durable and irritating to fight monsters. The rate at which they spawn is incredibly annoying, the higher up the difficulty chain you go. When there are multiple enemies on the map that can incap you and they keep spawning, it crosses over from difficult and challenging and scary to harassment. That's what Back for Blood does, it just harasses the players over and over again. And I get enough of that from the internet TM. I don't need it in my video games as well. But yes, Back for Blood loves to spawn the same special enemies at a rate that could only be described as tiresome. And as a result, it doesn't feel as tactical, it doesn't feel as considered as the game upon which this is based. I've gone from fearfully dreading the appearance of a hunter in Left 4 Dead to rolling my eyes when three of its equivalents spawn in Back for Blood. But personal annoyances aside, it just takes a lot of the character out of it. These enemies are seen so often and they fail to stand out from the common ones so much. In fact, if it wasn't for the glowy things on their bodies that serve as weak points, some of them just wouldn't visually be distinct from the common horde enough. And that ultimately is Back for Blood's biggest problem. It doesn't stand out. It does nothing that Left 4 Dead didn't do better. It doesn't have any of the gimmicks of some of the more contemporary competitors. It doesn't have the big dog piley zombies from uh, World War Z. It doesn't have the aliens license. On top of that, the game also feels fairly slow. Weapons feel slow to fire, zombies feel slow when they rush you. There's never any sense of speed or ferocity. Weapons don't feel satisfyingly impactful enough. But that said, as a fan of horde shooters, it's fine enough. I've played it a fair bit. I don't think I'd choose to play it over something like World War Z, but as far as follow-ups to Left 4 Dead go, it is one of them. And it does try and do its own thing, in that it cribs things from other games and puts them in. There's a very, very, very light roguelite element to the game. The weapons you pick up along each run have different stats, different attachments, different rarities. And those are different each run, so there's some random generation there. Same goes for the vendors that you can use to buy equipment before a run. There will be randomized attachments in there. And there are also cards that you can unlock throughout the game that confer various stat bonuses on the player. These cards are drawn at the beginning of each run and you can choose one of them to apply to your character and they will stack and build up over the course of a campaign. Some of those are fairly interesting. You've got really basic ones that just add to your health or boost your stamina. You've got ones that make different items more easily found throughout a run and spawn more frequently. 
There are ones with drawbacks as well, although I've never seen the drawback um, prove superior to the benefit. Uh, disabling aiming down the sights is not something I ever want in this game, or most games that have it. But as you play the game, you can unlock more cards and you can build a deck of 15 of them to draw from each time you play a level. And that's pretty cool. It can get you approaching something of a build. If you use shotguns a lot, there are several cards that will do things like boost shotgun damage or allow you to move faster while using one. And it has to be said, there's a lot of content. There are, uh, I think, eight characters that you can choose from, some of which are unlockable, and they have unlockable cosmetics. They also have their own unique bonus such as Holly is really good at melee attacks and has stamina boosts, uh, Doc can heal each teammate for a little bit of health once per level, each of the weapons have their own cosmetic unlocks, there are many cards to choose from, you'll constantly be using supply points that you earn at the end of each run on unlocking new cards and new visual changes. There are also 33 levels to choose from. There are 33 stages, there are four acts, and they're split up into multiple chapters. So if you do get into the game, there is a ton to get into, and there are no microtransactions, because I know that's always a very valid concern. There is a season pass and a special edition and all of that stuff, but this is one of those games that could be easily exploited with in-app purchases, and it is avoiding that so far, so that's good so far. As with many games of this nature, it's more fun to play with friends. If you're playing with randoms online, it's going to be way more of a crapshoot. It has been for me. I don't have, like, many adult friends who, well, that, that, that implies I'm a friend to children or something. I'm not. I can't stand them. But most of the friends I have in my adult life uh, don't really play all that many games. And I seem to know one friend. I seem to know one person who plays this game on the rec. That said, I was fortunate enough to get a group together, my friend Jane, Laura Kate Dale, who does the subtitles on these videos, and um, someone called Posh Cat. And it's always gonna be more fun with friends than it is with people you don't know. People who might say, wow, this team sucks, while being nowhere near the team. I do feel it especially hard in this game, though, uh, that, that need for uh, people you get along with. Because in general, I don't have an issue playing with randoms. I have to do it most of the time anyway. I don't like talking to people, so if it is just three other people very silently playing the game together, uh, I'm into that. That's my idea of a good night in. But I find it harder to get into the gameplay of this with people I don't know. I don't find it so simple to just drop in and have a good time, especially on the harder difficulties where there are, oh, there are corruption cards as well. There are these cards that are drawn that make enemies stronger or impose limitations or make more birds appear. There are birds in the game and if you disturb the birds, it calls a horde. And then you'll have half a dozen specials just throwing up vomit on you and spitting webs at you and smashing you with club arms. And then there's a massive one. It's as big as a fucking house. And it throws meatballs at you, literal bulls of meat. And that's back for blood, really. Bulls of meat, left for dead, not as good. Doesn't stand out so much compared to contemporary horde shooters or the game to which this is spiritually succeeding. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I think I'd honestly rather go back to World War Z. World War Z Aftermath came out, uh, it, it escaped my notice. So probably check that out now. Back for blood. It exists.